Learning with the Illuminati. Part 16. Introduction to the Basal Ganglia. The basal ganglia and cerebellum are important for support to the upper motor neurons in the cortex, and for regulation and control of movements. Some important neurotransmitters of the basal ganglia are GABA, works inhibitory, glutamate, works excitatory, and dopamine, which works inhibitory via D2 receptors, and excitatory via D1 receptors. The basal ganglia can be divided into the so-called direct and indirect pathways. The neurons modulates both in anticipation of and during movements. The basal ganglia nuclei consists of the chordate and the pitamen, which makes up the stratum, the globus pallidus, internal and external, and the substantia nigra pars reticulata, which makes up the pallidum, and the ventral lateral and ventral anterior nucleus of the thalamus abbreviated, VL, and VA, nuclei. Further, the substantia nigra pars compacta, abbreviated, SNPC, or just SNC, and the subthalamic nucleus abbreviated, STN, are closely associated structures. The stratum, function as input, whereas, the pallidum, function as output. The thalamus works as, output and relay structures, and the substantia nigra pars compacta, and the subthalamic nucleus, works as modulatory components. The input via the stratum, synapses with dendrites of medium spiny neurons, or MSPs, which integrate projections from cortical, thalamic, and brainstem structures. Also these can be seen to degenerate in Huntington's disease. The cortex sends excitatory glutamatergic projections, together with modulatory projections from the substantia nigra pars compacta, to the stratum. Many projections comes from association areas in the frontal and parietal lobes, along with parts of the temporal, insular and cingulate cortex, and are collectively called the corticostriatal pathway. The chordate of stratum, receives input from multimodal association cortices, and frontal motor areas important for eye movements, whereas, the pitamen of the stratum, receives input from the primary and secondary somatic sensory cortex, higher visual and auditory association areas, and premotor and motor cortex. However the primary visual, and primary auditory cortex, does not project to the stratum. The synapsing between cortical projections and medium spiny neurons, is arranged in such a way that each spiny neuron, receives signals from several cortical axons, thus one medium spiny neuron integrates the signal from thousands of cortical cells. Further, cortical glutamatergic axons synapses on the dendritic spines, whereas dopaminergic axons from the substantia nigra pars compacta synapses adjacent to the synapses, and modulates the cortical inputs and cortical and nigral inputs relatively far away from the soma. However, local circuit neurons, and thalamic neurons synapses close to the soma. The medium spiny neurons exhibit few spontaneous activities, and appears to encode decisions to move towards a goal, rather than the direction and force needed to reach it. Output from stratum, to the pallidum. The medium spiny neurons in the stratum, sends upon upstream simultaneous excitatory inputs, downstream inhibitory garbergic signals to the globus pallidus and substantia nigra pars reticulata and, due to a high degree of convergence, the striatal neurons exert a broad but weak influence over many. In addition to some strong influences of certain sets of pallidal neurons, the output signals to the cortex, originates from internal segments of the globus pallidus and reaches the motor cortex via the ventral anterior and ventral lateral nuclei of the dorsal thalamus. This pathway works by disinhibition, as the striatal neurons has, sparse spontaneous inhibitory activity, whereas its downstream globus pallidus has, a high level of inhibitory spontaneous carbergic signaling to its downstream thalamic cells. In other words, 
the cells of the globus pallidus acts through constant inhibition on the thalamic cells, however when the sparse signaling striatal neurons once firing, they inhibit the inhibitory globus pallidus, thus the thalamic cell become disinhibited, or in other words, nothing inhibits the cell, and may fire to the motor cortex, thus the main output of the basal ganglia is inhibitory, which due to the disinhibition, allows upper motor neurons to initiate lower motor circuits for movements. However the cerebellum contributes by giving excitatory input to the ventral lateral nucleus of the thalamus. The indirect pathway antagonizes the activity of the direct pathway by increasing the level of constant inhibition from the internal segment of globus pallidus and dopamine to also act on the basal ganglia. The dopamine D1-like receptors enhances excitatory responses, whilst, dopamine D2-like receptors enhances inhibitory responses. Two non-motor loops of the basal ganglia are, the prefrontal loop, important for initiation and termination of cognitive processes, and the limbic loop, important for emotional and motivation behavior. Parkinson's disease can be seen along with cell death of large dopaminergic neurons of the substantia nigra pars compactor. And Huntington's disease has early effects in the encephalin producing medium spiny neurons, projecting to the external segment of the globus pallidus, affecting the connection between chordate, putamen and globus pallidus external. In Parkinson's disease, the D1 and D2 connection between the substantia nigra pars compactor and chordate and putamen is degenerated, causing high inhibitory outflow, affecting the upper motor neurons. This can partially be medicinated by L-DOPA. And lastly, masses of the protein alpha synuclein, known as Lewy bodies, can also be seen throughout the nervous system in Parkinson's disease.